Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this first lesson in Week 22. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at electrodynamics. In order to understand electrodynamics, you need to understand that there is a magnetic field around a conductor. So please watch the next video that has been prepared by the Mindtech Learn team in order to understand how a magnetic field is produced by a current carrying conductor. Here is what we will cover in this series. The magnetic field around conductors, the motor effect, electromagnetic induction, generators, alternating current. In this series, we will learn how electricity and magnets are related. You may not think it, but a cell is very closely related to a bar magnet. In fact, we can make magnets using electricity and we can also make electricity using magnets. First, let's look at what we know about magnets. Magnets attract some metals. They have two opposite poles, a north and south pole. Opposite poles attract. And like poles repel one another. Magnets have magnetic field lines. Some of these ideas are a little difficult to see. So let's do an experiment to show the special properties of magnets. As you can see, these small coins are attracted to the magnet and so are these iron filings. These iron filings are also handy to show the magnetic field around the magnet. If we place the magnet under this cardboard and sprinkle the filings over the top, something interesting happens. The filings are most attracted to the north and south poles of the magnets, but look at these lines. These are called magnetic field lines. The magnetic field lines are closest at the poles, where the attraction is the strongest. The field lines can also indicate the direction of the magnetism, but we can't see the direction. To show this, we use one of these. The needle inside lines up with the magnetic field and shows us the direction as being from north to south. So far so good. That was a quick recap of magnetism. Now, can we make a magnet of our own? Yes. To make an electromagnet, we use a cell or battery, wire, a nail to wrap the wire around. Here is an electromagnet I prepared earlier. When I attach the wires to the battery, look, the nail is now magnetic and attracts the coin. If I detach the wires, the coin drops. To find out how this works, let's look at the magnetism when current flows through one wire on its own. When this wire conducts electricity from the red positive terminal to the black negative terminal, a magnetic field is created. Let's use our tiny compasses to see the field. When I switch the current on at the power supply, we can see that there is a field around the wire. It seems to make a circle around the wire. We can even use our right hand to predict which way the field will flow. If we show the direction of conventional current, positive to negative, using my thumb and then use my fingers to wrap around the conductor, they will show the direction of the magnetic field. Let's see if we can predict the direction of the magnetic field around this wire. My thumb is pointed from the red positive terminal to the black negative terminal. When I switch the power on, the compasses move in the same direction as my fingers. Loved those compasses. That is quite difficult to draw on paper, so we can represent the direction of the current using a dot. If the current is headed away from us, we use a cross. When we use a dot, the current is coming towards us, like this. Try to draw these with me and practice drawing the field around the wires in the pictures. Can you see? When there is a dot, the field flows anticlockwise. Now, let's look at a coil of wire, like this. 
It has many individual wires, just like the electromagnet we saw earlier. We call a coil of conducting wire a solenoid. An electromagnet is simply a solenoid with current flowing in the wire. We can use the iron filings to see the field lines. When we switch the current on, the filings move. We can see the field lines surrounding the individual wires, but look at the middle. Notice how they all seem to be aligned. Let's draw the current going up out of the surface and going back into the surface using dots and crosses. Here is the same coil, drawn using the dots and crosses. See if you can draw the magnetic field around each one. When we draw them, do you notice anything about the field lines in the middle of the coil? The field lines all seem to be pointing in the same direction. Let's test it using the small compasses. When we switch on the current, notice how all the compasses point in the same direction inside the coil. We were right. Remember, earlier in the lesson, we say that magnetic fields move from north to south. The part of the solenoid where the field comes out is the north pole of our electromagnet. There is an easier way to find the north pole of a magnet. We can use our right-hand rule. But this time, things change around. We use our fingers to show the direction of the current around the solenoid and our thumbs become the direction of the field. One way to remember this rule is that the many fingers on your right hand represent the many wires in the solenoid. Now that we've seen how a solenoid can make a magnet, let's see how we can change the magnetism inside the magnet we've created. We've seen that all wires that carry current electricity have a magnetic field around them. This magnetic field is all around us, even without us seeing it. We can make use of this magnetism from electricity to tell that electricity is flowing in a wire. It can even tell us how much is flowing in the wire without connecting to it. Handymen and builders use this tool to tell where the electrical lines are in a wall. When electricity flows in a wall, the magnetism given off tells the sensor that it is not safe to drill a hole there. In hospitals, Doctors use large electromagnets in scanners to produce images of the human body. These scanners are called magnetic resonance imaging machines. Images produced by these MRI machines show doctors the inside of the human body without using harmful x-rays. This magnetism has caused some concern in other places where large amounts of electricity flow. Some people have asked questions about the safety of large volume electrical cables above people's houses and businesses. Some people believe that this magnetism has an effect on people and animals below the electrical lines. Scientists have been unable to show that there is any effect, but the concern remains.